Hello, I want to come to you again with another fireside devotional today. Today I'm reading from the 8th chapter of Romans. The 8th chapter of Romans focuses on life with the Spirit. We understand the Spirit as the Holy Spirit, which is part of the Holy Trinity. God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is that presence uh, that, that uh, Christ left us an advocate working on our behalf when Christ was crucified and then was raised and went to sit at the right hand of God. Jesus said, I'm leaving an advocate for you, some, some, someone to work on your behalf. And we understand that in the church is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, as we understand it, guides us and protects us and leads us through life. And so the Holy Spirit is something very important that we need to be attuned to. So I want to start kind of like a, uh, a movie in reading the scripture today. You know how some movies will give you the, the final scene first, and then they go back. Then they go back to the beginning, and then they work through until they get back to the final scene. Well, that's what I'd like <clears throat> to do today. The first verses I'm going to read out of chapter 8 are verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In this time of pandemic, one of the things I've noticed through social media and talking to people and observing people is that people are searching for something, they're grasping out for something greater than them to bring peace and comfort to them and to bring clarity of what's going on. Even our leaders, if you watch them on TV and in, in, on radio broadcasts, you can tell they're searching. They don't know. They're taking steps each and every day just to try and catch up and hopefully get ahead of this pandemic virus, COVID-19. They're searching, and like they are searching, a lot of people are searching, and what I've noticed is they are looking to God. They're trying to find God in this situation. I've seen people make posts about faith and, and, and praying in God that I've never seen posts before on Facebook, and, and I'm, I'm hearing people talk in ways that that uh, you can tell they're, they're, they're seeking and searching for, for comfort, for peace, for assurance. And so that's why I read today that I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, the question needs to be asked. See, that's the end game. The end game for us is to get to that place where we're convinced that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ and that we will be protected. We will be comforted. We will be led through this by God. And to be convinced of that, how are we to be convinced of that? Well, let me go back now. Because you see, it's not, it's not just God who has to work in this situation. It's not enough to live our life every day and just go along our, our, our way living according to the world's standards. Because you see, God created us to be in a relationship with God. God wants us to choose to be in a relationship with God. And so there is a responsibility. There's actually work on our part. Let me read, starting in chapter 8 with verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh 
is hostile to God. It does not submit to God or to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh. In other words, those who are going along, just living their life, not worrying about their faith, not worrying about their spirit, not worrying about eternity. Those who are just living life, going along and thinking that, you know, God's just something that's out there. This, this faith thing, I'm not into that. I'm a spiritual person. Yeah, well, we all have spirits. But being a spiritual person isn't enough. You see, God calls us to be in relationship. And so we need to learn how to focus on God. And the only way we can do that is through prayer, through meditation, through scriptural reading, through, through Bible study with other people, and through worship, actively engaging in worship, both individual worship at home, through daily devotionals, but also in corporate worship in church with the body of Christ. We are called to do that. You see, so God wants us to choose to be in relationship with us, with, with God. But it's not the kind of relationship where God's constantly running around doing something for us and we just call on God, uh, you know what, oh, I think I haven't talked to God in a long time. You know, <clears throat> I'll just check in, see how God's doing. That's not how it works. That's not how it works at all, especially in times of difficulty. So we need, we need to get to know God. We need to literally commit time, effort, spirit, mind, and soul to God in order to be in this relationship to where we can eventually be convinced. Even in the midst of a pandemic virus, that God will watch over us. In verse 14, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit guides us. That is that voice inside your head that makes you understand right from wrong, good from evil. And so the more time we spend with God, the more time we are, uh, the more we become sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit because that comes to our forefront because our, our energies go where our attention is, right? And so if our attention is on God, if our focus is on God, then our energies will start, our, our, our life will start to become centered in the way that God thinks and we will begin to, to think the way God thinks. Now, <clears throat> that, means, that means that we will start living life through a different prism, through a different lens. And when we begin to do that, when we look at life through God's eyes instead of the world's eyes, guess what happens? The world begins to get jealous and get nervous because the world does not understand God. And so, there are times that you might get made fun of. There are times when you might be persecuted on, on God's behalf because you stand up, because you see the world through the eyes of God's love and grace, not through the eyes of the world's greed. And so because of that, it says, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him, know that anytime anyone makes fun of you for your faith, you are glorified in God's eyes in God's heart when you stand up for God. There's work to be done, folks. There's work on our, half, on our, our behalf to be done in order to, to be convinced that nothing, nothing can harm us and the love of God will never leave us. 
Starting in verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who have loved God, who are called according to God's purpose. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. You know, sometimes we don't know how to pray to God or how to, how to communicate with God because we don't have the words. Maybe the fear or the anxiety is just choking us so much that we just can't, we can't comprehend exactly what we want to say to God. But you see, God knows our spirit because we abide by the Holy Spirit. We're, we're looking at God through God's eyes, not the world's eyes. And when we do that, the spirit intercedes on our behalf and communicates on our behalf with God and brings us into communion with God. So you don't have to be an eloquent speaker. You don't have to be the world's best prayer. It's about opening yourself up. It's about opening yourself up to God. That's, that's how we do this, folks. That's how we get to where we are convinced. We do this by prayer, meditation, by purposefully spending time worshiping with God. And, and as we do that more and more, it, it, it changes you. It changes your thought pattern. God will literally change you and you become a new person. You see the world differently. You see the world through the eyes of others, of love specifically for others, not just gathering for yourself, but also caring for and living for others as Christ did and showed us how to live. And so today I pray that as you go through your day, whether you're at home or if you are having to work, I pray that you would take time, take time to spend with God, to meditate, to pray. Even if you don't know how to pray, just focus on God and the spirit who knows your heart, who knows your mind, will intercede on your behalf. And as you do, I pray that you would be convinced that nothing, nothing, not even this pandemic, can separate you from the love of God this day. Amen. Be safe. Be well.